Hi guys, welcome to another Razorback screencast. Since the last video, I have made a few small tweaks. Sometimes I make tweaks off camera just because I'm not sure about them and uh, I need a while to think it through. And it's not good to burn good video time when doing that. So the first thing I did was cleaned up this section of the turret bracket right here. This uh, let me just select it. Select the region so you have a better idea of what I'm talking about. This area right here on both sides. I just made it so it's a little smoother. It has a few more subdivisions. Nothing major. Another thing that I adjusted is the general size of these uh, infrared rays. So I made it a lot thinner. I added a little bit of a bevel to the edge and I was able to do that just with the general cube primitive settings. So uh, let's see, if I select my cube the fillet radius is 0.1 so if we make that 0.05 and get it nice and sharp, really subtle effect. So that I think that looks a little bit better. Looks like I'm intersecting here just a little bit so maybe I can move that away there we go so I, I just thought they looked too bulky and I like the way that they sweep back now that works really well for me so in this video I think we're going to focus on cleanup a little bit we've been creating a lot of new geometry like these panels and these brackets and even even these lidar units way back in the uh, in one of the videos when we created those they're all here, but they're not fastened down. They're not bolted down. If you want to get really technical, these are just floating. They're sort of touching the frame right there, but that's about it. So let's, uh, let's create some more brackets. Now, we've done this sort of stuff before for the GPS units, so it should be fairly simple to adapt that technique to bolt these... Uh, LiDAR units onto the frame. Now we won't need to do it for this main unit in the center because the assumption is that it is sitting on a platform right here and doesn't really need to be bolted down to anything. So that's okay. But for these guys I'm thinking what we would probably want is a bracket that fits at the rear of it and sort of curves up and over just to give you guys a, uh, a better view of what that could look like is sort of a bracket doing this. So one on either side, so to give it a little bit of a 3D feel. And that should be enough. So let's get rid of that doodle and get started. We can use the same technique we used in the past, which is just to create a cube, just so we have some sort of structure and then transfer the cube to the area we're working in. And once we have it in the general location we want, just start to rotate it and bring it up so that it's kind of in the spot we need. The next step I do is I delete all but two faces, the two faces of the bracket that we'd want to use. So you can select all these polygons and you can do an invert selection. I have a keyboard shortcut set up with the U grouping. So if I press U, well, this is default actually. I was mixing it up with my other keystroke, which is I think semicolon. So you can press U, I to invert the selection. I believe that's a standard shortcut and then just press delete. And we can see that we have a sort of a rough bracket shape now. Now the next thing we do, well, next thing I usually do is I grab one part of the bracket, like this part right here, and I sort of rotate it into place where I need it to be. So I'm just going to use the scale move rotate tools to get it sort of in the general vicinity of where I think it would bolt onto the machine. Then we can take this edge and bring it up to the actual unit. We'd need to rotate him as well, so it's nice and flush. We can probably shift our perspective just so we can get a really nice view of what this should look like. 
And we may not always be able to get it perfect at first, but we can tweak it once we've created the initial, uh, I guess, transformations is the word I'm looking for. So if we move this back, we can see it's roughly at the same angle the other part was at, but not quite, so we can rotate him into place. And now we kind of have a bracket. But it's kind of sloppy. It just kind of sits there. It's not very, uh, it's not very precise. So just like we did for our GPS units down here, we can make them a lot nicer. So that's what I'm going for. We can pretty easily make an extra cut. I think that would help. So I'm going to do visible only. And we just make a cut right there. We can then make another cut right here. And that'll just allow us to bring some shape into it. So this really has no purpose other than making it seem like the bracket was sort of bent into shape by hand. I'm going to use the slide tool and just slide this point down so that it fits our substructure a little bit better. And now that this face right here is disconnected from this one, we can actually do what we wanted to do at first and make it a little bit more uniform relative to the object that it's actually attached to. So this is all really imprecise work, but it works. So we can then slide this edge down. You know, I love using the slide tool because it's one of those tools where you can just sort of make adjustments knowing that you're still within the bounds of the object. In other words, if I use the move tool, I can really mess things up here. But if I use the slide tool, well, there's only really so much I can do. I can move it here or here and that's it. So I really like the tool because of that. Then I want to select this edge right here and bevel it because you know, one of one of the first 3D mentors I had taught me a lesson that I've pretty much taken to heart. Uh, his name was Brett Lewis. He was he was my first um, one one of my first bosses for for 3D, and he taught me that you need to bevel objects like these bolts here. If you don't bevel them, they don't look real because most things in life aren't perfectly sharp. So we can just uh, we can just do a smooth operation right here like that. We can bevel it, and right away it 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 looks more realistic. So smaller bevel perhaps. And just like in the other brackets, you know, we can we can select a size and say okay, that's going to be the thickness of our metal and then we do an extrusion. So we can just select all the polygons, we can do an extrude. Now, let's talk a little bit about the extrude tool and how it works. So you can create caps or not. This is one of the uh, options that gets people in trouble a lot. So if I extrude outwards and then we look on the inside of the object, it's hollow. But if I click create caps, it creates a solid object. This is great if you're going from a flat surface to a solid surface like I just did. But if you already have a solid surface like this and you say extrude again with create caps turned on, look what happens. I'm just going to swing inside of the object. It creates two levels. So the quick fix for this, in my opinion, is just to make sure you always have create caps turned off. Because that's what we wanted. We wanted to add more thickness without creating intermediate polygons in between, which are invalid. They're, they actually cause errors. For instance, uh, if you want to have your model pass the Turbo Squid Checkmate certification, stuff like that will make you fail really quickly. So in general, create caps is off until you see a situation like this. So, oh, actually I wanted create caps turned on. As long as you don't do anything in between those operations, you can just toggle it on and off like you just saw me do. So create caps on for now. And I'm going to do an offset of a uh, eighth of an inch. So I can actually just type one over eight. I get an eighth of an inch thickness. And 
because we're moving up in this direction forward in this direction it's sort of shoved everything into the unit and that's not what we want so I'm going to do a loop selection to get those polygons right there and another loop selection to get those and then right here I can simply sort of move them out so that they don't intersect the object as much and again sort of look at it from different angles looks good I like how that looks and right there that's that's kind of our bracket perhaps I'd want to select this loop right here this one as well and do a bevel operation just to smooth them out a little bit that looks nice and then just to make it look like I was mentioning in the other screencast to make it look like it was created by a human it's often good to round out the edges because nobody likes working with sharp edges like this and if I was at a machine shop and making a few of these brackets I would definitely um, I would definitely round out the edges a bit so that I don't get cut. So something like, like that's fine. We could add one subdivision if we really wanted to. I think these are visible enough that, and large enough that adding a subdivision would be good. Nice. So these brackets are fine, but this unit might be pretty heavy, and I think we may want to add a gusset to the bracket. So what I'm thinking is sort of a triangular wall coming down right here sort of giving it strength um, we could put one in the center but let's put one right here at the edge I'd, I'd like to experiment with that just see how it works so let's think for a second if we use a knife tool and we bring this down like that well Let's go right across and then cut so that we're actually creating a wall like this. It doesn't have to be very precise. I'm actually going to hide pretty much everything else. It's just so I can work with this cube. So this is this is that attention to detail. Nobody needs to go into this much detail, but I often do it. Okay, so we can bring that over. So now we have a, we have sort of a template that we can follow so that we have a wall at the edge here. Now we're going to need to create the same wall on the underside. I just created it on the top side as sort of a test so we can see what we're going to make. So we can just do a cut straight across like that. And then we can replicate this wall. I can go to line mode so I can see what I've laid down before me. Now I've got to be careful not to go over my same points because it looks like it snaps right through. I think that's one of the changes in the recent version of C4D. I don't remember the older versions doing that. Okay, so let's just go and create our cuts. What this has done is it's created a region here that we can work in. So I'm going to unhide all that stuff that I hid before. Switch it back to default. And we can now see if we select the cube that we have regions here we can play with. So I can select all of these polygons and just hit delete. And then I can use the bridge tool in edge mode to draw a bridge from this edge all the way down to this one. Now let's just take a second to see what that gives us. We can see right into our object right here, but there's a really cool aspect. We can now fill the holes and bridge the gaps. So the easiest way to demonstrate this is just to start. I'm going to bridge this gap right... Hmm, twist it around a little bit on me. Okay, let's see if that works. I'm going to bridge that gap, and then that means I can fill this hole. And if we go from the inside, I think we can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just creating that block. And then because we've already filled that hole and there's only one hole remaining, we can just use the fill, fill close polygon hole tool, and we can just fill this hole. And what's what that's given us is... um. It's given us sort of a patch. 
so our bracket is now closed on one side. And just to make this look a little bit more appealing, we can use the knife tool and just make a single cut right there. And we can bring it up like that. Maybe make another cut. Bring it up like that as well. And, you know, just I'm just playing around. I'm just experimenting here. But now we have sort of a, a gusseted bracket, which which should be stronger if, if my if, if the little engineering knowledge that I have uh, holds up and doesn't fail me this kind of bracket should be a lot stronger so we can try to subdivide this area a little bit more so we have a quad there and uh, this is kind of yeah there we go that works out so again we can hide all of these other objects I really should be using layers for this, but I never practiced using layers, so I don't really know how. I might be looking for a tutorial out there to help me with that. If you guys know of any good tutorials on Cinema 4D layers, let me know. I'd be really interested in some workflows. So we created some excess geometry up there. We can probably just collapse it with the stitch and sew tool like that. And then we have a gusseted bracket. Now if you wanted to make this look even more realistic, we could try to bevel the edges on the inside and that would that would go something like um, selecting this edge right here and then doing a bevel. And then you'd have to go in and clean up all this mess that it's left behind. But nobody's ever going to see that, I hope. So we can just leave that alone. What people may see, however, is this rim around the edge so you know I'm, I'm a fan of selecting that using the loop selection tool and beveling it because when you when you bevel this kind of stuff like I said one of the guys I used to work for said if, if you bevel something it looks real because it starts to get that little shine on the edge and it starts to look deliberate but if you just leave it unbeveled it it looks 3d it looks it looks fake so a pro tip for you. I'm trying to think of the best way to triangulate this and I don't think there is a great way so I'm just gonna do that. So there's our bracket. It's pretty fancy. We could even go further and Try to select a loop of edges on this side, and you get you get the idea. You could do a bevel down there as well. You'd have to clean all that stuff up, and I'm not going to. So there's our bracket. So this is going to be. LiDAR bracket. And we can unhide all of this other stuff now. And we have a really nice smooth looking bracket that holds that, that part on. Um, because this part is now complete, I think we can move it into the same hierarchy as the unit itself. So we have a LiDAR instance in symmetry. In order to make this work, you can't put more than one object in a symmetry object. It'll only mirror the first one. So you see as I switch the position in hierarchy, different ones get mirrored. So what I would actually want to do is um, group these. Well, group the LiDAR instance. And then place the LiDAR bracket beneath it. So now both of these objects are being mirrored and it actually looks like I modeled it on the other side that doesn't really matter so now we have a bracket holding those devices on and this sort of leads me to my original intention with this episode uh, sure the brackets are there but not, there's, there's no bolts, there's no screws, nothing's holding it together so let's see if we can create some of those I'm a really big fan of reusing hardware like like bolts. 
So the first thing I usually do is I look at the machine to see if there's any bolts that I like that we can reuse. So this one here looks pretty good. So if we look at our hierarchy and we search for that object, it's currently engine cover bolt. I think that's fine. I'm going to copy it, deselect all, and then paste it so it goes up at the top of my hierarchy. There's a preference for that. It basically says, where do things go when I copy and paste them? So we have this, uh, we have this bolt. Now I did a five minute tip uh, recently. You can see it on my website where I talked about positioning these uh, objects using a constraint. And that's the exact technique I'm going to use right now. It makes really quick work of this kind of stuff. So we have this object here. I'm just going to check the normals. Yeah, all the normals are facing in the right direction, so that's fine. And what we can basically do is we have our LiDAR bracket, and then we have our engine cover bolt. Let's call this a... Um, Let's just call it an Allen bolt. Or just to be specific, let's call it Allen bolt 2. And what we can do is create a Cinema 4D tag, but it's not under Cinema 4D tags, it's under Character Tags Constraint. So this is going to allow us to constrain this bolt to something else. So there's different kinds of constraints. There's a position scale rotation, up vector, clamp, mirror. We're going to use clamp. To get all the details of what I'm about to do, you can look at the other tutorial, but I will say we're basically just telling it which object to clamp to, and we're just going to tell it to go on the surface and be zero units away. So now we have an Allen bolt that sticks to the surface. Very nifty. We can further enhance this by saying align as fong normal or just normal. Fong normal works better sometimes. And we can increase the distance, decrease it. I'm going to leave it at zero. Um, we can then go in here and we can basically say, okay, let's select all the polygons and let's move it up a little bit. And then I'm going to fill the hole but down down here then control drag to extrude it down so what we have is we have a section of the bolt that's going to penetrate the surface and give us that flush look we can then delete it so that's what our bolt is going to look like we could also triangulate this stuff in here easiest way is probably going to be extrude inner and then weld everything to roughly the center and then delete every other edge using a melt command so that actually gives us a bunch of quads and we can then move this position back to the center so that gives us the look that we're looking for for that bolt So that's one, it's kind of large, so we can just scale it down a little bit. And because it's constrained to the surface, we're just free to put it wherever we want. See at a certain point it falls through. But we want one there, and then we can, let's create an instance, Let me move the instance. But you'll notice the instance is intersecting the surface. We need to copy the constraint tag to it as well. And it decided to flip to the underside. So we can sort of try to tease it over to the top. Like that. And now we have two bolts precisely precisioned. Uh, precisely positioned. There we go. So that's our bolts that hold it onto the frame. Perhaps we may even want a third bolt sort of like a three bolt pattern and it's sticking to the surface hooray so we have those bolts done for right there it looks like a big improvement and we can add a couple to the side as well so what we need to do is we can take the same instance and copy it but we need to tell its constraint tag about a different object 
in this case, this object, cube2. So we just change its constraint to cube2, and we can move it to cube2. We probably need to set its distance down to 0 again. That's one of the reasons I left it at 0, because otherwise you'd have to reset it to a specific value every time. So we can move this object around. You know, sometimes it likes to flip to the back. I'm not sure why. But we can really easily come in here and say, okay, one, two, three, four. Our bolts are all set. So one thing that's really important about using this technique that I showed in uh, in my tutorial is that you need to get rid of these constraint tags before you save or you need to lock their position because I'm not sure if it's a bug or I'm not sure if it's by design but the constraint tag seems to remember where the object was before you shifted it around on the surface maybe this is advantageous for character animation I'm not sure but for our purposes it definitely doesn't work so once you have these items in the position you want them in and you know they're not going to move very soon you can actually feel pretty safe just deleting those constraint tags and uh, you know maybe put them in a group called done or something so I'm not done so I'm just gonna undo all that and we have more places we'd like to put these so I'm thinking we probably want two bolts here. And then we'd want to do the same thing to this other bracket. So like I said before, you need to copy the bolt that you want. Maybe move it around just so you know where it is. And then you tell the constraint tag about the other object you want to constrain it to and set its distance to zero. So now we can move this bolt around and just replicate the same pattern. And these details are the ones that really make the model. They really um they really complete it. They give it that that very thought thoughtful look. It it, it really makes you feel like like the person modeling it thought about all of the little details that would have to exist in real life. Of course, when you're modeling real life things, this is important. So I'm gonna, I'm going to, looks like I accidentally turned off number nine. Let's turn it back on. So I'm going to control drag another one, bring it down here. And this time I wanna attach it to the first cube. So we can just put it right there, set its distance to zero. And we can just put one bolt there, another bolt there. Maybe go from the top view just to make sure that they're lined up right. So something like that looks pretty good. And now, now that we're on this cube, we can bring one down over to there, and one down over to the other side. So, you can just control drag, bring it down here, looks like it went on the wrong side, but we can fix that. With some clever maneuvering. Looks like it needs to be right there. Now this is one of those cases where to position it on the other side, I am going to opt to not use a constraint. Uh, reason being that I already kind of know where it should be. It should be at the exact same position as this object, so it rotates along the same axis, but out here on the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one, delete its constraint. I could probably delete all the constraints now because we're done with the positioning phase. Well, we have this one bolt here, so I'm just going to transfer its position to this object and then just move it out. 
we may need to rotate it 90 degrees but the difference is now I know exactly where it lines up I know that when I rotate the nav the, the has cam this is going to be at the exact center point of rotation and that's that's a nice reassurance to have and so we can just rotate this one 180 degrees and there we go you just added a bunch of bolts to this region that make everything seem a lot more put together we will need to mirror them to the other side so this might be a good time to do some organization I'm just gonna select all the all the objects and change the name to hascam bolts now we can group it call that hascam bolts group and we can then place that in the appropriate symmetry area so I guess the hascam brackets null is a good place for it so when we place it in there they all mirror over to the other side as well good stuff now the hascam brackets null object is at kind of an arbitrary angle and I don't like that so I'm gonna switch to axis mode and change its position to zero it's root global needs to be its world so its world position to zero its world rotation to zero like that so that'll allow me to now move it up into the general region of the has cams and just place it there because this has cam brackets null has just become a utility object without it we wouldn't be able to do the symmetry in the same way we're doing it so uh, let's call this cube has cam cradle uh, this one is going to be outer bracket and this one right here can be inner bracket simple as that so now our has cam bracket symmetry object contains both has cams but then we have a has cam null and the null instance so I almost feel like these have all sort of graduated into a has cam group because if I move them if I move them out to examine on their own you can see that they're sort of all has cam paraphernalia it also makes me realize that these three bolts here are in the wrong spot now could the lidar units at the sides be grouped in with the has cams I think so so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just create a new null object put it up there at the general instrumentation region and I'm going to place it in the instruments and we're going to call this has cams and lidar just to make everything really organized I love organizing things in a hierarchy so we have our has cams in has cams and lidar we have the lenses here for these instruments these forward-looking cameras we have our red lights and then we have our symmetry here for the lidar bracket so I'm gonna continue to maintain two symmetry objects but let's call this lidar symmetry because the lidar units are what's in it and we can move that up to the has cams and lidar group and then we can also take this central lidar unit and move it into the has cams and lidar group as well so hierarch hierarchically what we're getting is we're getting a instruments group that contains all the instruments and then we have a has cams and lidar group that just contains the has cams and lidar and the bolts associated with them and then in there we have lidar and has cam stuff so from an organization standpoint doing things like this is going to make your life a lot easier and i'm not going to show this in the video because it's pretty self-explanatory but the next step would be to add the bolts to these brackets right here that were for the GPS units it looks like something is broken one of the symmetry objects oh that's interesting 
It looks like it's a drawing glitch. There's no kickstand on the other side of the bike. Why is that? Yeah, it's some sort of a some sort of a glitch. That was weird. It's a good thing I've been saving incremental files. I hope that's not a bug in the file, but we'll see. So there you have it. The front area now has a lot more bolts holding everything together. I'm not sure it looks better, but it looks a lot more realistic. Maybe we can come back in and change that in the future. But I think for now it adds um it adds a real sense of uh, unity to these parts that were previously just sort of randomly placed on the surface. So I hope you enjoyed this. It was much more of an organizational um, sort of fine detail screencast, but I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, see ya.